Hey guys, this is uh, Solarin from the Viridian Ocean once again. Um, I'm back and I'm going to be recording a video where I play poker for you guys live and talk through what, go through spot, go, what goes through my mind when I make decisions at the poker table. The reason I called with that is because I already had the small blind out there and it was 1,000 into a 10,000 pot and only one player could raise after me, so it's suited and it can make us straights. Um, real quickly, before, hopefully before too much action occurs, um, I wanted to talk quickly about different types of hands, and the first video that I made, um, if you haven't seen my first video, look it up, and, um, it goes through a lot of concepts, and it's just an introduction to poker concepts that you might want to have, um, as a background before watching this video. So, um, okay, so it's, it was a small bet. This guy doesn't have too many chips, and I want to push out this player who might have a draw, so I'm going to raise a substantial sum of money to try and figure out whether or not I have the best hand. If he calls here, I'll probably bet again on the turn, and then I'll check the river. Okay, um, King King, obviously, I'm going to raise. It's a very strong hand. That is a very bad flop. However, nobody raised pre-flop. It's possible that I still have the best hand, so I'm going to call. I'm probably not, yeah, I'm definitely not going to call that. Um, I probably wouldn't have called much more than 10, 12,000 on the turn. Okay, so different types of hands. Drawing hands are suited connectors small connecting cards, mid middle connecting cards, middle suited cards, things like that. Wow. And um, small pairs. Preflop, like a 7-7 seven -seven preflop, it's actually a little too big of a pair to be considered a drawing hand. This would be considered a drawing hand. But um, your small pairs are also hands that would be said to have implied odds. What implied odds means is if I, let's say, um, let's say this player raises and I'm sitting where, or let's say I raise and Hinky has a small pair of deuces and I don't raise too often. Well, if he has deuces and I raise a big amount like 12,000 like I did last time, he might figure that I have a hand like Kings. Well, his deuces is definitely losing, but if he thinks I have a hand like Kings, it's likely that I will lose all my chips on a lot of different flops. So it makes sense to call with deuces, try and hit a deuce, and then take all my money on a flop of queen, eight, deuce, or something like that. This hand is too weak to call in my, posi in my position, even though I have good position. Um, so deuces and six, seven suited, those are implied odds hands or drawing hands and they play very well against big pairs and ace-king and things like that. So if you think uh, someone has a strong hand, those hands are very good to call and try and try and hit with. Another implied odds situation would be if you have a straight draw or a flush draw and someone's betting what looks to be top pair or something that they like. In that situation, it makes sense to call, even if it's a pot size bet, it makes sense to call with a draw because if you figure them for having a strong hand, then it's likely that you'll get action later on in the hand if you hit your draw. And if they bet again on the turn, you can easily fold. Okay, um, Revered has been raising a lot. I don't really know what he has, but I think King Queen is ahead of whatever range of hands he's likely to be holding here. Um, if it had been another player, I might fold. Polona, I don't know anything about. But um, also, this call makes it even more tempting because it gives me some odds on my money. Oops. Oh, dang it. Sorry, I was trying to raise to like 11,000 there. I'm just going to fold. I could raise him, but um, 
it's just not a good idea at these games most of the time to race. Unless you have unless you have top pair or better. Sorry about the jacks. Um, I would have continued betting on that flop by the way. Okay, um, ace three suited. There were too many players in the flop in the pot already for me to raise. This is a hand that I just want to draw to a flush with or hit two pair. Or maybe get some some small amount of value out of an ace. Um, I'm playing two tables by the way just because I can really can only do two minute or ten minute videos. If I want to make um, show up on YouTube. You definitely want to fold just garbage like this from just about every position. I would call and try to hit two pair if everyone called for 2,000 and I was sitting on the butt. Try to hit two pair or maybe three threes, something like that. Okay, it's small enough for me to call. It's a decent hand. Flopped an open-ended straight draw, but um, a full house is already possible. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'm going to call one time and try and hit my draw. He's got a lot of chips, so he can pay me off if I do hit it. And also, if he checks, I might be able to take it down, which I'm going to try and do. Especially now that I've picked up this other draw. I picked up a flush draw and he checked, so it looked like a good spot to take a stab at the pot. Um, you could go ahead and just try and take a free card in that position too. But um, it looked like a continuation bet from PZL Master. He had raised preflop, so he wanted to continue with his aggression and try to find out if anyone had a hand. And if they didn't, he would have just picked up the pot. Continuation bets are important in poker. I didn't talk about it in my last video. But whenever you're the preflop raiser, you should always fire some half pot or close to pot type of amount of bet to try and pick it up on the flop. Just to, because it's difficult for players to hit a pair, someone with two random cards. It's only going to pair up about one third of the time. Okay, I'm going to raise here. Um, this is because it's four handed. If this were at this table, there would have been seven limpers, so I wouldn't have raised. Or, you know, there would have been a bunch of limpers. Um, I think he's a bluffer, but I'm not going to raise because there's a bunch of diamonds and I just don't want to risk a whole lot of chips. I think I had the best hand on the turn, but um, checking does two things. It allows me to lose less if a diamond comes, and it allows me to get a bluff out of him if I am ahead. So because I checked on the turn, there's a good chance he's bluffing here. And there you go. If I hadn't have checked, I, I would not have won that last bet. Of course he had a straight draw, so I gave him a chance to hit his draw. but. Um, I wouldn't have lost more than 20,000, probably, if he had hit his draw, maybe 30 or 40,000. Okay, um, that's probably 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. I didn't look at the time when I started, so I don't know how long I've been recording. But um, I'm going to stop this one here and start up a new one here in a moment.